Hey guys, Dylan DeJesus here. Welcome back for another video. Today, we're gonna to be walking you through how you can easily airbrush a tropical sunset type gradient, along with some very basic airbrush maintenance tips, such as what you'll need to do in order to quickly color swap while working on a project, what type of solutions you should be running through your airbrush to clean it, how you should store your airbrush, and just some other very basic tips that'll help make your process become a whole lot more efficient. So let's go ahead and dive right into working on one of my all-time favorite canvases, an all-white pair of Air Force Ones. Starting with our color palette, we're gonna be attempting to do a six color gradient that's going to start with a light tangerine and work all the way up until a deep royal blue. In order to make sure that all of our paints are ready to be airbrushed, we're gonna to need to mix a little bit of too thin into them. The amount that you're going to use is really going to depend on the current consistency of your paint, really based upon how new it is. But for the most part, a pretty common range is going to be somewhere around 20 to 30% of your total mixture. After we have all of our paints mixed with our too thin, the next most important thing to do is to make sure that we run all of our paints through a strainer. This is gonna catch any of the larger chunks of paint that might be in your mixture that would definitely clog your airbrush down the road. Moving on to the painting, I'm gonna be working from the bottom up, so we're gonna start with our light tangerine color. I also always like to add in a couple drops of white into some of my initial base coats for any given color. This is just going to give a better base with more solid coverage for our color to eventually lie on. Now that I'm done with that initial base coat and we need to give a little bit of dry time before we can move on to our next coat, this is where I'm gonna clean out my airbrush. The first thing that I like to do is pour out any additional paint left behind in the airbrush cup back into your paint storage cups. After that, we're gonna take a shop towel or a rag and clean out any of the additional paint left behind in the cup. Next, we're gonna run some airbrush cleaner directly through our gun to spray out any of that color that we have left behind. This is also when having a tabletop airbrush cleaning pot really comes in handy because you can spray any of this airbrush cleaner mix directly into here. Now you're just gonna go ahead and repeat those same steps of keeping the cleaner flowing through your airbrush until you no longer see any color residue left behind in your airbrush cup. Another trick that you can do is keep a cup of water nearby along with a paintbrush that you have set aside, and then you're gonna take that paintbrush and work it into the bottom of your airbrush cup while pulling back on the trigger and spraying out all of that additional water and any paint that you have left behind. So now the paintbrush is essentially trying to clean out the bottom of the airbrush cup. Then in between colors or when I'm done with the project, I just store my airbrush on one of these tabletop clamp airbrush holders. And that's essentially all you need to do in order to move from one color to the next while still working on a project, or even when you're done with the project for the day, you don't necessarily have to run to the sink and break down your airbrush entirely. But now back to the painting, I'm gonna continue working my way up this gradient, moving on from one color to the next, typically doing around three coats or so for each main color of this gradient. Once we have the main base for our gradient laid down, the next thing that I like to do anytime I'm working with a pair of shoes that has a lot of different panels, such as an Air Force One or Jordan One, is I like to go in with a tiny detail brush and just add in a little bit of paint in any areas where the two panels meet that you weren't able to get even coverage with your airbrush. This can sometimes happen when airbrushing, no matter what angle you try hitting your shoes from, you're just not able to get that full even coverage right there. So if you go in with a paintbrush, even if it's a darker shade right now, which it typically will be by hand, you'll at least be able to blend this out easier down the road. And this is a very common mistake that you'll see when people are trying to get full coverage with a gradient across an entire pair of shoes. Now we're ready to go back in and soften up some of our blends and make them even more seamless. And the way that I like to go about doing this is what I like to call the middle bar technique. So what this requires you to do is take the two colors that you're trying to blend together, pour them directly into your airbrush cup at a one-to-one -one ratio, and then we're gonna use something called the backflow technique to mix them together. So for this, you're gonna cover up the nozzle tip of your airbrush while still pulling down on the trigger, not allowing any air to escape from the front, and this is gonna force everything in your airbrush cup to mix together. So now you're gonna have an even mixture of the two colors that you're trying to blend together. Now with this mixture, you're trying to airbrush this across any areas where the two colors meet. We're actually working with a relatively simple gradient in terms of where all the colors are next to each other on the color wheel. But if our colors weren't as close to each other on the color wheel, or if we were working with a little bit more difficult colors to blend, another thing that you could do is take both of the original colors that you used for your middle bar technique and reapply those trying to blend them into that middle bar. And this is just gonna give you that really seamless look. Another little pro tip for the middle bar technique, if you were working with lighter and darker colors, such as black and yellow, you wouldn't really wanna use 
use a one-to-one -one ratio of black and yellow, you would use something a lot closer to 80% yellow, 20% black for your middle bar mixture. Once we're happy with all of those blends, we're ready to move on to the sock liner portion of our Air Forces. We're gonna go ahead and swap out our too thin for too soft when working on the sock liner to try to keep that as nice and factory soft as possible. And here's a look at our initial six color gradient fully laid out. Now we're gonna go ahead, finish this project off by using some of our tropical floral stencils along with our drip swoosh stencil pack. So now how about we give you guys a look at how these Tropical Sunset Air Force ones turned out. So there you have it guys, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Airbrushing gradients is definitely something we've talked about in the past on this channel, but we really wanted to expand upon that, talk about some of the maintenance tips and how you can just make your process a whole lot more streamlined and keep you moving really efficiently. So thank you guys so much for watching. Also, don't forget all entries for the DCF Floral Contest are gonna be due Friday, July 31st. Really looking forward to seeing these. Some of the ones that we've already seen are absolutely crazy. You guys are killing it. This is gonna be a fun one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you guys in that next video.